what, what what was that? Okay, thank you. Very good. <laughs> you can go away now. So one of the most important things when it comes to recognizing objects is, first of all, recognizing patterns. So humans are really good at recognizing patterns. Uh, this is fundamental to how we perceive any object. And the way we do this kind of pattern recognition, the way we do this most basic form of object recognition is through two separate processes. You have bottom-up processing and top-down processing. So bottom-up processing just refers to how you kind of collect information. You collect all this sensory information and you try to piece it together to try to figure out what the bigger picture is. So you're, you're, you're detecting all the different parts of this pattern and trying to connect them to build a more complex perception. But you're also, at the same time, doing top-down processing where you're applying your memories, you're applying your previous perceptual experiences and trying to see if the environment fits those perceptual expectations. So by doing both of these simultaneously, we're really good at recognizing objects very quickly and efficiently. Now, some of the earliest psychological research was psychophysics. You know, the early researchers, they were interested in how do people make sense of the world around them? How do people recognize objects in the environment? Well, they developed a few basic principles. These are called the Gestalt principles of organization. So the first is nearness. We tend to group objects together. We tend to group stimuli together that are close to each other. Another one is similarity. We group objects together that are similar in their size or shape or color or form. Another principle is continuation or continuity. We tend to perceive uh, objects as being continuous. You know, even if we don't have all the information, we still see the object as being a full object. Here's an example of that. So you, when you look at this, you'll probably see a red rectangle in front of a blue box. Well, it could be a blue box. You don't know if it's a blue box because you're missing that important piece of information. But you just assume that it is. Another principle is closure. So the principle of closure is just our tendency to complete an overall figure so that it has a consistent form. Now, what you see here, this is a, the symbol of the World Wildlife Foundation, the WWF. Now, when you look at this, what do you see? You see a panda, right? It's obvious. But you are missing very important pieces of information to tell you that that's a panda. Specifically, what you're missing are these lines right here. So the reason why you didn't perhaps even realize you were missing that information is because your brain automatically closes that object. It automatically draws that line for you, in a way. Another principle is con contiguity. So we just group objects together that are both near in space and time. So objects that appear at the same time, we tend to as assume are related. And common region. We tend to group uh, stimuli together that are found in a particular area. So object recognition involves all of these different kinds of principles. So all these different Gestalt principles and you know bottom-up and top-down processing, all this stuff is going into how the we recognize objects. And object recognition is definitely one of the most important tasks of our visual system. I mean, you have to be able to recognize important things like hazards, you know, food, drink, water, friends, enemies, shelter, all that stuff. Visual perception starts in the occipital lobe, but object recognition is such an important task and it requires such, you know, efficient processing that it's actually performed by the entire brain. Your whole brain will show activity in different patterns of activity depending on which objects you're trying to recognize. So we know, for example, that faces and various body parts have a lot of activity in parts of the temporal lobe. 
whereas other objects like handheld objects and things like that are more so in like the somatosensory cortex, you know, the, the, in the parietal lobe. So it's through these patterns of activity that allow us to recognize various objects. And I just kind of mentioned something. I just mentioned that the somatosensory cortex shows activity when you're simply looking at and recognizing a handheld object, right? So that's kind of interesting. It's almost like simply looking at the object makes you feel the object. And if you think back to when I was talking in a previous video about how your sensory systems interact, that seems to make a lot of sense. It's like if your sensory systems can influence each other so much, then they should have overlapping patterns of neural activity. And that's the basis of the theory of grounded cognition, or sometimes it's called embodied cognition. The, this theory, all this theory is about is just saying that your perception and your memory share the same neural networks. So when you see a, when you see a cat, it will trigger memories of a cat because the same neurons are being active. So whether you look at an object, or touch it, or taste it, or smell it, or simply think about it, your brain is doing the same basic processing. Additional support for this theory of grounded cognition comes from mirror neurons. So mirror neurons are these specialized cells in the brain that become active when you're either observing a particular behavior, or you're engaging in that behavior. So there's been a lot of really interesting studies looking at mirror neurons, but for example, you'll see parts of the brain that are involved when you play tennis. And the same parts of the brain will become active when you watch tennis. And the, the fact that your brain has this such a high degree of similarity between perception and action explains why a lot of people like watching sports so much. It's kind of like simply by watching the sport, you are, in a sense, playing the sport. Because to your brain, it's the same basic thing.